Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now, the button below. Many different projects, many different things that we're doing from our app, from our da'wah. The program in the UK is upwards of 1400 a month, the program in Canada. So it's non-stop when they see us making appeals for support. They have also some people make comments that, why are they doing, they're trying every type of inno innovative way to get support. You know that there are organizations and, and this is a, the pitiful reality of the Islamic nation that with all the wealth Islam has and all the blessings Allah has given to Muslims, the attack from shaitan is fierce to divide Muslims. Where shaitan works with other communities and they come together very strong because he wants them, his murids to become strong. Those whom he doesn't like in Ahlul Islam, he makes them to all be separate. So they have tremendous wealth and you see that people are making appeals around the world and asking for relief and there's even a big organization was having a cupcake sale. They had literally had to sell cupcakes to raise money to feed people and children in Yemen which is not a, a, a good sign of the nation. The nation that has so much wealth and so much prosperity and Allah so, so much with them they should have the ability to ask and people just flood and send and that relief to reach to people. But it's not the case. So when big organizations are having cupcake sales, well of course uh, me and you we're going to sell tasbihs. We've got to do whatever we can to raise the funds for the projects we have. We're not funded by a government. We're not big shaykhs that have 20 million dollars in bank accounts because they got money from world leaders all over the world. So we're just grassroots and grassroots try to get our organizations, we have an insurance division that they want to sell insurance policies to the community, they'll give a percentage to the community. So we're trying everything possible to raise funds so that these projects are ongoing. So we're not a people who do one thing and go. We have an annual mawlid, we have a, an app that continuously being is, is updated, sharing functions, all sorts of functionalities. We have the television shows UK, Canada re renewed, we have books, we have websites that you know three, four websites continuously being upgraded. The Nur Muhammad website now is much faster, it's landing page, not so congested with different things. So, so many different projects, so many sort of dedicated people trying to get these things to be finished. So as a result the engine behind it you know requires fuel. The fuel is the support and donations of the community and those whom are enjoying its services. They're watching the videos that comes with a camera and a whole crew and all of the uh, internet uh, connection speeds that are required. Those whom are enjoying the app took hours of, of programming and more hours behind it of trying to keep it up to date and all its functionalities. So all of this is, is, is coming not just by kun fayakun but by actual blood, sweat and tears. So we pray that Allah send more and more people to support, be happy with supporting it, feel like it's a life cause. If you can't do something directly for Sayyidina Muhammad at least support those whom are. So that our propagation is strong in the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and to propagate that love in this language. So those you can count on your fingers or, or finger that are doing that. So it's not like it's commonplace to teach the haqqaiqs and the reality of, of Tahzim and Nabi which amongst ulama is the highest level of knowledge is Haqiqatul Muhammadiyah. So we've simplified it in English, people thinking, oh that's the first step. No, that was above the scholastic levels of alams to go towards Haqiqat al-Muhammadiyah. So alhamdulillah that Allah is bringing that and making this so reachable and, and accessible to people. Especially in the West, why? Because Sayyidina Muhammad promised that the sun would rise from the West and the sun is Shamsul Arifin. The sun is the source of eternity and the source of knowledges that Prophet was hinting that my eternal knowledges will rise from the west and that has a deep reality.
that the West will carry the realities of Islam to prepare and pave the way for Sayyidina Mahdi and the East is already buried. Sorry if you're in the East, it's not Mashariq, it's Maqarib. They gave away their reality, they gave away their, their desire for these haqqaiqs and they chose dunya instead. So the East is in the setting of knowledges, they propagate the worst level of knowledges. And that's why you see all of these khawarij and all of these madhabs are coming from there, they don't come from here, they're propagated here. And what you see from here is Sufiya and Ahl al haqqaiq that are from the West because Allah sent them there to propagate the realities and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result of that knowledge they can freely publish and do that work and send it back towards the East. Where in Eastern countries if you try to teach one thing of haqqaiq they come and cut your head because they're so now in a different level of belief. So alhamdulillah Allah gave us this great honour, this great opportunity, this great ability and a great purpose for living. He said, if you're not living for this type of reality and you're living from your nine to five and that's the only purpose and future of your life is, wow, when is the next raise coming? They're gonna bump me up five percent, woohoo! No, that's not what it's about. But it's about what we can do to get the attention of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. <coughs> Sayyidi, if I am in trouble, hard times, then how can we know if this is a punishment or imtihan from Allah? How can we deal with in both situations? Please forgive us. InshaAllah, Azubillah shaitani bismillah ar-Rahman Alhamdulillah <coughs> that we're grateful for people who ask questions and even more grateful for good questions. And if we ever sound a little bit sarcastic or funny, I just we're entertained by it. But we appreciate greatly that people want to communicate and want the guidance. The question as far as punishment or test, they're both the same. And that's why our life is based on tafakkur and contemplation. Is that my whole life is about whatever comes to me, it's a loving hand. I don't see it as a hand that coming to slap me around, it's not like an abusive parent, it's a loving hand of guidance that if Allah loves me and wants me to be at my destination, everything I'm doing has degrees of wrong and as a result Allah is bumping me towards the right. We feel it and sense it in tafakkur. So that's why you are tuning in to this channel because this is a teacher of tafakkur who has books and ijazas on tafakkur. It's not you can just ask anyone and then they'll tell you, oh yeah tafakkur is like you contemplate and think about the tree. No that, that we have a degree from Mawlana Shaykh on this subject. So it means everything is then the basis tafakkur. Once the basis tafakkur and contemplation and meditation taking a hisab and muhasaba, everything else then makes its way clear. So if my life is about learn how to make that contemplation, how to connect my heart, how to keep the madad of the shaykhs, the nazar of the shaykhs, I want the nazar of the shaykh then support the shaykh. I want the shaykh's attention then do something to get his attention, to be of service. All of that then develops the relationship, then I sit and connect my heart. Once I'm connecting my heart all of these types of questions become clear. As soon as something goes wrong you're a person of meditation, meditate and see why, why was that coming? You know why did you have an accident today in your car? Why did you trip? Why did you fall? What, did, what was the sign and the message coming? Was it a difficulty that was coming to you then Allah wants you to be patient. Was it energy that affected you? Allah's then showing you, look, look it's like a boxing match. How come you're not ready? When he loves you, he sends you a little bit of difficulty say, if this guy could slap you around with this energy and nazar, how are you going to help yourself against dajjal? So it means am I building myself, am I building my energy, am I doing my awrads and these are my life support? Am I doing all these practices? So everything is, uh, is from love from Allah 
and the tafakkur makes our way to be clear and all of it understood inshaAllah. Sayyidi, can you please guide us how to overcome painful pasts, especially arise during meditation? <coughs> Everything happens for a, a, a reason and when people are going through difficulty which most of the people of tasawwuf come from some sort of an event, emotional event, emotional disturbance within the home. All of those were meant at many levels, one a zalzala, when Allah wants a servant to bring out their soul's power, He doesn't comfort them with a body like a mountain, you know that's so encased, so entrenched that their soul will never come out. Those whom Allah loves with the reality of bringing out their reality and haqqaiq, you see that their lives had many zalzalas, many quaking, many difficulties so that their soul really never slept deep within the body. Always they felt like they're out of their body, out of body experience because the body was never a place of comfort for them, was never something safe or happy for them. So there's many reasons. One that reason so that they have a, a prone spirituality because body was something that their soul always tried to escape. When your body is like really happy and has always been happy, your soul is a big prisoner because it's always been good. It just encased the soul and has soul has very little ability to ever get out. But those whom have had traumatic difficulties there's always been a quaking. So there's always a, a way that this faraj, that this soul has been trying to get out and escape the body. The two is that we never destroyed a people until we sent from amongst them a warner, right? So we don't send somebody from a village in somewhere who has no experience and send him in the middle of a, a metropolis, a downtown city where he comes from a village and make a dawah now into a city where he think everything and everyone is a kafir, everything is kufr, everything is forbidden, everything is… Allah didn't say that in Qur'an that we're going to bring you people from other areas into your area to do dawah unto you. But he said, I didn't destroy a community until I raised from amongst them people who have that difficulty, have been abused, have had many of these experiences and Allah saved them as a result of any bad or anything that happened to them, Allah made it a life experience for them. And if they were able through their meditation, their connection and their prayers to turn it around as an understanding, then Allah sends you into the community of those people and now help them. How can you help abuse children if you were never abused? What do you what do you know from them? What do you expect to you just say, Oh, I really yeah, I really know how you feel. You don't know how it feels if you weren't abused. So why would you say something like that? So then Allah says, Allah's with this haqqaiq. No, no, I'll I'll make sure that you were abused. And as a result of being abused, you turned yourself around, you understood its realities and the sicknesses of people, then you're the perfect ambassador to go back to these children and to people and say, I know what you feel because I, I actually do and I, I can relate to it. So same thing, we're all raised in the West, we're raised in this environment, we, we, we had friends from every type of background, there's not much that you can put on to me that I haven't seen, you can't hustle me. We don't come from that kind of background, we come from this background. And that's exactly what Allah wanted, no, no you go amongst them, you know these people, they're your people. And then you do your da'wah and you're teaching to them. But if I have no relevance, I don't know what these people are talking about, I don't know why you dress like that, I don't know why you talk like that, that wouldn't be a sign of wisdom. So Allah's infinite wisdom is that to bring people from all of these experiences 
bring them and develop them and then release them upon mankind. Go back now and help people once you've gained something for yourself, you feel a strength, a connection. Now you have something to give, go back out and help people back like a, like a survival team. Yeah, offer a rope for their salvation back to reality inshaAllah. Dear Shaykh, can you please provide me the reality about online addiction to watching un-Islamic things and self-gratification and how it affects one's energy? InshaAllah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Big, big, uh, big subject that keeps coming in all the emails is pornography. That to look at things that are not halal and dangerous for the heart. And as a result of looking at all those things, one then develops a desire that can overtake them and then they're continuously sort of self-gratification. The danger on the pornography and then the danger of continuously gratifying yourself. The one on the gratification of the self is like eating. Anything that we do and we do often, the appetite for it is growing. And that's why Prophet described for us fasting because shaitan runs through the blood. As soon as we fast and take away of fasting, one, many energies are being depleted from the body. Shaitan that is running through the blood of insan is going to be restricted. And anything that you try your best to abstain from gratifying yourself, its desire will drop. The more you give to it thinking, okay, then it keeps increasing. Before you know it that desire is increasing then it becomes a vicious cycle. The, the desire within is increasing so then the person gratifies themselves. Then the desire through their eyes, everything is becoming hungry from that. So. The deep reality of fasting and we're now talking about intermittent fasting. The fasting, full fasting of Ramadan and the style of Ramadan what they call dry fast where you eat and drink nothing. If you can do that often then alhamdulillah that desire should go. If you can fast from the desire and say, oh I'm going to refrain from doing that, I'm going to increase my salawats, increase my meditation, increase my practices. So that you can control that desire, the more you can abstain from it, the more that desire will diminish. The more you give to it like a fire, you put a little bit of a match to it, it starts to grow where you can't control it. As much as you abstain and say, I'm going to abstain from that and try to take a control like a struggle, all the characteristics have to be struggled against, Allah give you a command over that energy and it begin to diminish. Then the reality of the fasting, what's causing that energy to overtake? And that's why we said the Sayyata Amalina, that there's sins that are coming into you. As soon as you commit a sin, whether by eating, drinking or seeing, you opened up your force field. So this is the easiest and most clear way of talking is through energy. Anything that you do that opens your force field. Once you open the force field, these ifrit, you visualize them like a mosquito, like black things, like a black uh, sludge. They're in the millions coming towards you because your shield is gone, your, your shield of wudu is gone, your shield of good, good characteristic and good actions is, has a hole in it. These ifrit are coming through. When they come through, they come through the food you eat, you begin to look back and say that, was the food I was eating, was this halal in the sense that, was this something allowed for me? The food I ate, did it have a, a person who had a bad energy in it? Because you start to make your tafakkur about all your energy, where were you deficient on your energy sources? So that you understood in energy why we talk about halal food is not so much the zabiya, But when you go to eat the person who's serving you food, if they're not from your belief and they're in junub that they just did something, they don't ever wash, they don't care about washing, 
all of their energy, their thoughts, their desires, their actions they're putting into this food, they're looking with nazar onto the food. So the food that we eat picks up many energy sources. Forget about if it was the zabiyah question, just the energy sources of that food. Then I have to say, okay, my energy and my food of what I'm eating, am I making my du'a over everything? At least I can balance this energy by saying, Illa Sharaf and Nabi, and in the app we have a du'a for food. By the sanctity and the noble soul of Sayyidina Muhammad Illa Sharaf and Nabi wa Ali wa Ashabihi kiram walla mashaykhina. So I'm asking in the name of the nobleness of Sayyidina Muhammad the awliya, the sahabi, Ahlul Bayt and my shaykhs, their arwa that now gaze upon my food and my ta'am, my drink that with your barakah and Allah say that mention these names and tanzil rahmah and a rahmah come, that rahmah Ya Rabbi clean every badness in what I'm about to eat and to drink. So then are we making the du'a on all the food? Are we understanding that whatever energy is coming into me, what am I picking up of these energies? That then is, a, is the trail of energy, how to understand that why, why is this energy coming to me? If these, if these energies are coming to me no doubt you're going to have desire. Then when you start to look at it you have to think that every time you're looking at these things you can't meditate because as soon as you want to close your eyes to connect and visualize you're in Medina you have all these horrific images are coming to your eyes and that's exactly what shaitan wanted to do. That's why we said in fasting is not fasting of the mouth, it's fasting of all the senses. When you're trying to use your heart to connect to Sayyidina Muhammad but shaitan says, no, no, that look at this image. As soon as you look at this image, the image went from your eyes because it's the, the window to the soul. The image goes from your eyes and then burned onto the heart. So the heart is the hard drive and your eyes are capturing like a video camera. So all this capturing, 10,000 images, 20,000 images, it's actually going to crash your hard drive. So there's no way to meditate, as soon as you meditate you're seeing all these hor horrible images. And that was the understanding in pornography, why shaitan is trying to con contaminate the eyes because he's trying to collapse your heart. So one is, what am I going to eat, drink, make my prayers over all of the, the ways energies are coming in and then to understand how to defend myself against that by making my salawats, by keeping my wudu, by trying to wash that when I've seen things like that, that when I take a shower in the morning that to see my soul washing away all of these negativities. Ya Rabbi let my soul in the whirling of its actions, let all this negativity that tried to come onto my eyes to be washed away, to be washed away. And you make a wudu from what's in the heart and the images that are in the heart like a hard drive cleaning. You're cleaning the hard drive in the shower by visualizing the soul being washed by water and washing away images that were not good for the eyes to see. Once we understand that in the tafakkur and do the salawats, do the awrahs, do all the connections then we should have an understanding and a grasp of that desire inshaAllah. Say the anger is forbidden, what are the guidelines if we get angry on people who do or say something inappropriate? For example, some people don't know their limits when they are dealing with the opposite gender. Other people don't know the limits when dealing with opposite gender or… Yeah everyone has you know different background but the main thing is trying to control the anger. That by keeping the wudu, keeping salatul wudu, keeping salawats, keeping all of our practices so the energy of the characteristics of people don't affect us to the degree of anger. So that it can be a learning experience where we tell people that this maybe is not the best thing to do, you can try to teach someone. But once the person enters into a state of anger it's more of a conflict and then becomes conflict resolution. And again if it's more specific that there's a person in your life and somebody's acting inappropriate with that person then that's also in Islamic teaching that that's why we have gender separation, we don't sort of mix 
people all together, we don't keep people from a different background close to our family members if they don't understand our culture and they keep wanting to, to come and approach. And that's what we've done with the community. So the community is of the same understanding. When you invite people from a big different background and they keep wanting to say hello to the ladies section because it's not in their culture they don't understand. That's why Islamic culture comes to teach, no keep everybody separate. Here's not a place to say hello to somebody else's wife and daughter. You say hello to the men and that's it. So you teach and that's why we keep our separations and that's why Allah gave us the ease of defining these boundaries. Once you lose those boundaries and try to mix amongst other people then you're in a different ball game. And just trying to control your energy is important and so not to get angry and try to teach and to abstain. Now alhamdulillah Allah made it easy for everybody, isolate, actually stay away from people because people are the problem. The virus is not the problem, the virus is the people. The more the people stay with people they cross contaminate each other and they begin their fighting and arguing and every type of defect. You see that when you isolate less fights. Because you, you, your only fight now is just to fight yourself and that's the greatest fight that Allah wants is those whom come against themselves and their characteristics inshaAllah. <coughs> mm. Sayyidi if we feel the presence of the shaykh during the awrad can we ask from the shaykh to fulfill our worldly matters? I think we've talked before about that, that you're going to get an answer from your own desire because they don't intervene in, in that subject. Their training is to not use that connection for dunya. As soon as you use it for dunya you're going to have your own answer come back. So many people will say, oh I was with such holy people, I was making tafakkur, then I say, I wanted this, I wanted that and they, they say, okay it's going to come to you. In actuality no it didn't, they didn't say anything, they stayed quiet and you began to answer yourself, this coming to you, this for you, this gonna be for you, this gonna be for you and those were all your desires. This connection and the noble connection that they're teaching is for akhirah in which it's a one-way communication that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, let me to be in your presence and continuously effacing yourself. If you're facing yourself you're not asking anything, you're basically saying, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, dress me with your nazar, keep your nazar upon me, keep the light upon me, keep energy upon me and then I make my tafakkur and think about all my bad characteristics and they will inspire me about my wrong characteristics. It's not a microphone and now what I want from them. Life is not McDonald's and they are not a drive through where you ask for fries and a hamburger. You don't need to ask for anything. You came to be nothing. So when I make the tafakkur I'm nothing, I'm nothing, dress me from light, dress me from light. Say so dress me and fill me from your light and inspire my heart, my bad characteristics and I just want light, I just want light, I want light. Otherwise this becomes another medium in which just to keep asking and talking, I want this, I want this, I want this. But that's not submission anymore. Where we're trying to develop a relationship with Allah in which Allah wants something for me and that's it. But I turn it around where now I just want something from Allah all the time, I want this, 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 I want this. Then it's not any more submission, it's that Allah has to listen to me astaghfirullah and I'm just keep asking for things. So then tariqah is keeping the best of adab that uh, don't make that relationship of tafakkur based on that. Come with nothing, asking nothing and to be nothing. In that ocean of nothingness the more you diminish the more you can feel the fana and the hudur of the shaykh coming. And then as that comes they'll take you to Prophet so that you don't ask Prophet either because last thing they want is you know is somebody jabbering too much in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So then they'll teach you the best of adab so when they take you to Prophet it's again nothing. That just keep your nazar upon me Sayyidi Ya Rasulul Kareem, Ya Habibul Aziz. No yo can I have this, can I have this, can I have this, can I have this, can I have all, can I do three of these, four of these. So then that, <laughs> that, that continuous adab is so important because as it's progressing then the student has to have that understanding, I'm not asking for anything, just the nazar inshaAllah. Finish khalas inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. 
Click the link now to subscribe.